Okay, we're back and we're gonna pick up, actually, not with 51, because I'm not gonna do that, but with 52. The stopper tubes below labeled A through D each contain a different gas. When the tubes are unstoppered at the same time and under the same conditions of temperature and pressure from which gas will diffuse at the fastest rate, so that would be the lightest of the GFMs. Helium, neon, argon, and krypton. I'm gonna guess helium, but you know what? Um, I'm gonna go back here and just check my good old periodic table. Helium has a mass of four, neon is 20, argon is 40, and krypton is uh, 84. So helium is by far the lightest. So choice A for 52. Um, the heating curve below represents a sample of a substance that is starting at a solid and below its melting point being heated over a period of time. What is going on uh, with the energy during D to E? So that's a phase change, which means average kinetic energy does not change. You can notice um, that that line doesn't move. And so, uh, hold on a second. I crossed off the right answer. <laughs> Oops. Potential energy increases and average kinetic energy remains the same. Yeah, I just crossed off the right answer. 53 is C. Um, which sublimes at room temperature and standard pressure? That would be dry ice. That's just something we have to know, solid carbon dioxide. Um, sublime is solid straight to a gas. So we talked about dry ice, which is CO2 solid, and also mothballs, but we don't know the formula for naphthalene off the top of our head. Which term represents an intermolecular force in a sample of water? So these are bondings, but the intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding, which is, um, you know, between very polar molecules, the partial positive side with the partial negative side. Okay, um, 56. Based on table H, what is the vapor pressure of acetic acid at 90 degrees Celsius? Acetic acid, 90 degrees Celsius. So table H... Acetic acid, which is ethanoic acid, 90, I just kept saying it like a million times and I just forgot it, 95 degrees, 90 degrees, oh my gosh, all right, so 80, 85, 90, ethanoic acid, that's 10, 20, 30, 40 kilopascals, whoops, 40 kilopascals, choice A. In which system do molecule ion attractions exist? Well, you got to have um, molecules, which is going to be H2O. And you got to have ions, which these all have. They all have ions. So the only one that also includes H2O is choice B. After being thoroughly stirred at 10 degrees Celsius, which mixture is heterogeneous, meaning it would not dissolve insoluble? Or, yeah, heterogeneous. So um, let's see. K, KCL, KCL, um, or, or if it's not insoluble, it would be, um, uh, oversaturated. Let's see. Okay. Sorry. KCL at, I forgot all of it. I should have had it printed out. I'm sorry. Uh, 25 grams of KCL. 100 grams of water, 25, 10, 25 and 10, 10 degrees Celsius, gosh, I really do need to remember this, 25 grams, 10 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius, okay, sorry, 10 degrees Celsius, 25 grams, it would be right here, so we've got KCL, just this one, so it's is under the line. Then we had KClO3. Ooh, that's over the line because that's here. Super saturated. Um, I think we had NaCl. NaCl and NaNO3. NaCl is here and NaNO3 is way up here. Somewhere like that. So the only one that's over the line is KClO3, which means it wouldn't dissolve because it's not hot enough. So it's just going to sink to the bottom. So it's going to be that one, choice B. 
According to Table F, which ions combine with chloride ions to form an insoluble compound? Iron, lithium, calcium, and silver. So which one with chloride? So chloride, if you go to Table F, chloride is here. It's going to be soluble most of the time, except for with silver, lead, and dimercury. So silver should be our answer, which is choice D for 59. Which barium salt is insoluble in water? Carbonate, chlorate, chloride, or nitrate? So barium. So here's a barium. It would be insoluble with barium sulfate. Any other bariums? Uh, oh, this is the opposite exception. So barium sulfate would be our answer. Uh, that's not a choice. Carbonate, chlorate, chloride, nitrate. Gee, I was so confident. Chlorate is always soluble. Um, it's not chlorate. Carbonate is insoluble except for group one, so that would be insoluble. Carbonate. Carbonate. So six days, eh? Yeah. According to table G, which substance forms an unsaturated solution when 80 grams of the substance are stirred into 100 grams of water at 10? So 10 degrees, 80 grams. 10 degrees, 80 grams. Let me erase this. Let's not erase. 10 degrees, 80 grams. So it's right here. Okay, so that looks like NaNO3 would be saturated because it's right on the line. Let's see. You want unsaturated. So we got NO3, NH3, Ki, NaCl. Oh, come on. NH3, NH3 at... NH3 is here, so it's above the line, so that's not unsaturated, so it's not NH3. NaCl, it's above the line, so it can't be that one. What are the other two? Um, Ki and KNO3. Well, Ki I know is way up here, so Ki is way up here. So if the line is here and my point is here, that would be unsaturated for Ki. AI, which is choice B. Um, okay, 62. A beaker contains dilute sodium chloride solution at one atmosphere. What happens to the solute particles as the boiling point of the solution is more? Okay, so, so when the number of, you're adding more solute dissolved, so the number of solute particles will increase and everything will be more extreme. So the boiling point will increase. The freezing point would decrease, but we're talking about boiling point right here. Under which conditions of temperature and pressure is a gas most soluble in water? That's going to be uh, high pressure and low temperature, which is the opposite of the beach. Opposite of the beach. This is the mass of NH4Cl that must dissolve in 200 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution. So whatever we find on table G, we're going to have to double. So 50 degrees Celsius NH4Cl. 50 degrees Celsius NH4Cl. Okay, so it's like 51, 52, but we're going to have to double it to get our answer. So like 10, oh, yeah, 104. There we go. 100 grams of water is saturated with NH4Cl at 50. According to table G, if the temperature is lowered to 10, what is the precipitate? So we start at 50 to 10 NH4Cl. 50... That's at 51, but at 10, we can only hold like 33, something like that. Carry that, eight. What, did, oh, what the heck, four, 18, something like that. Uh, all right, so go back to this. Uh, well, I'm gonna go with whatever's closest, which would be B. 17. What is the molarity of a solution that contains 0.5 mole CANO3 and a 0.5 liter? So the molarity formula is 
Moles of solute over liters of solution. I'm just going to prove it to you. Here we go. Moles of solute over liters of solution. So our question is already all lined up for it. So it's 0 0.500 moles over 0 0.500 liters. So it's 1. I'm embarrassed I used my calculator. It's the same thing. What is molarity of 1.5 liters? So that's our denominator. Okay, it's 52 grams. Okay, so we don't have moles. We have grams. So, But they were nice enough to give us the GFM. So you need to remember, grams divided by GFM gives you moles. 52 divided by 26 is 2. So 2 moles divided by 1.5 gives me 1.3 repeating. So it's going to be choice A. A student wanted to prepare a 1 liter solution of a specific molarity. Uh, you've seen this question many times before. And the solute needs to be 30 grams. So remember, just like in Kool-Aid Lab, we put the solute in first, then we add water up to the desired line, and then the last thing we would do is mix it all up. So you have to add um, enough solvent to the solute. This is solute to solvent. You don't want that. Solute to solvent. Um, solvent to solute. That could be, but it's too much. We don't know. It's not really a thousand. It's like the 900 or whatever. So 68 is D. 69. Um, what is parts per million? So mass of part over mass of whole times a million. So that formula is on table T as well. I just didn't want to go look for it. Times one and six zeros. Five. Um, which sample will produce the highest boiling point? So you want the greatest concentration and the most uh, ions. So it can't be those. So this is going to break apart into two ions, which is K plus and I minus. This is Mg plus two Cl minus one twice. So it's going to be choice D. Same with this. The lowest freezing point would have the most uh, particles in solution, which is going to be choice B. 72 we're not doing. 73, which describes the energy changes that occur as bonds are broken and formed. So when you break a bond, you disrupt that octet, which makes everything upset. So you're going to have to take energy in. And when you form a bond, energy is released. So now we got to find that one. Energy is absorbed. When bonds are broken and energy is released when bonds are formed. So it's like you're taking your favorite stuffed animal away. Which diatomic molecule is formed when the two atoms share six electrons? So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a triple bond. Who forms that triple bond? That's nitrogen. Um, electronegativity for a metallic element, those are going to be low values. So I'm going to go with the lowest value. You can go ahead and check on table S. Least polar bond would be the smallest electronegativity difference. Um, and I'm going to guess it's D, nitrogen to chlorine, but I have to check. Let's check. Uh oh. Where's electronegativity? Chlorine is. 3.2 nitrogen is, yeah, 0.2 is really small. Hi, Sean. You have to go away. I'm doing something right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. D for 76. Yellow soda. Yellow soda. You want to do yellow Zelda? Okay, yeah. go ask Colin, please. And be very nice about it, okay? All right. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Uh, Nonpolar molecule is symmetrical. So that's going to get rid of this one and this one. And you also have to have polar bond. Oh, that's symmetrical. Oh, well, then you go. 77 is B. Uh, CH4 would look like this. Charge distribution is symmetrical. And the molecule is nonpolar. Polar molecule is asymmetrical. I gotta hurry this up. It's gonna be B Yellow and <laughs> hold on. Nitrogen one, two, three, four, five is gonna be choice C. All right. Sean, can you say goodbye? Goodbye. All right.